Let's get to the money. Let's get to the money. 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 Let's get to the money. Let's get to the motherfucking money. Fuck the bookies. Fuck the bookies. FTB screaming. Fuck the bookies. Fuck the bookies. Fuck fuck the bookies. Fuck the bookies. Fuck fuck the bookies. Fuck the bookies. Fuck the bookies. FTB screaming. Fuck the bookies. Fuck the bookies. Fuck fuck the bookies. We don't think it in your ass. Give it fuck the bookies. Woke up in the morning, grab my little black book. Yes, sir, they can eat a dick. Cause we lost by the hook. Can't win them all, so you never see me. Shook. Today's a new day, the bookmaker's getting cooked When I spot a dirty K of four units getting played Always find the value, I will never be afraid Scared money don't win, but I'm not going all in Unless I see a bet I love, then I put my balls on a bookie's chin Let it all soak in Doubling my bread, winning money with my friends If you got the itch and you wanna go big Follow Sharpie bets and you gon' really fucking win This is not financial advice, it's entertainment But if I find the right price, believe I'm parlaying it You can see my spreadsheet, I'm winning, not just saying it Profit in the green every week, I'm never negative I can bet an ace or a shitty old picture yeah, Pick the yeah. right spots cause I'm the K-Prop whisperer Woo. Shut up what I speak until you finally get the picture I'm the best in the world, tell me you get richer Fuck the bookies, fuck the bookies FTB screaming fuck the bookies Fuck the bookies, fuck, fuck the bookies Fuck the bookies, fuck, fuck the bookies Fuck the bookies, fuck the bookies FTB screaming fuck the bookies Fuck the bookies, fuck, fuck the bookies Middle finger Let's get to the motherfucking monies. Welcome to season three of The Bocking Dead on this beautiful, beautiful Tuesday afternoon or morning, wherever the fuck you're at in this world. I'm your host, Sharpies Bets, and this is the best MLB prop show on God's green earth. This show isn't sponsored by no one, and we're doing this out of our own generosity, so I do appreciate those that have found their way over to my channel. This show is every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern. 12 p.m. Pacific. On this show, we will talk the opening lines of pitching props as well as the closing K prop line 30 minutes prior to the show going live. Of course, we will be going off 2023 numbers for the first few weeks, as that's just what we got to go by. So do me a favor if you like what you hear and smash that like button. If you're new to this channel, please hit this subscribe button as well. And as always, <coughs> I took a fat hit before we went on, fellas. <coughs> as always, drop your best bet in the chat and we will talk about it at the end of the the show. I right. We've got us six pitchers to talk about. We've got us a little bit of ribeyes with Mike. We've already got almost 30 people up in here. So let's get to the first guy we're going to cover about. Jesus Lazardo, number 18 in the black book. It's a home game versus the Angels. Last year, striking people out at a 28% clip while walking people 7.5% of the time. <clears throat> Morning line was 6.5 minus 110 at BetMGM, where the best line available to that 6.5 now is minus 106 on FanDuel. Pitching outs are under over 16 16- and a half minus 135 at Caesars juice to the under whereas earn runs are over earn runs are over one and a half minus 156 and that is at MGM and that is juiced to the over lineup is out for this one it's eight righties one lefties it's the exact projected lineup that they projected so let's talk today and start it off with a little bit of black Jeebus black Jesus a.k.a. Jesus Lazardo, guys. Now in his second start after going five innings, giving up two earned runs while punching out eight on 85 pitches last week. So I got to I gotta say he's ready, guys, for at least a normal workload as long as he doesn't run himself into trouble. Now we talked last week how Lazardo this spring was talking about how he wanted to go deeper into games, at least this year, and take the next step into becoming a true ace. And the first game stat line may not tell you who he wasn't that efficient with his pitches. Well, last year, the major league average for pitches per inning by a starter was 14.3. And last week, Lazardo was only 17 pitches per inning. Now, would he like it to come down? Sure. But at least it's going in the right direction. Now, Lazardo gets the Angels where when he seen him last year, he went six innings, gave up three earned runs, and punched out ten. And that lineup he faced was actually a stacked Angels lineup. It wasn't at the time without Trout, and it had Otani and whatnot in it. Now, the batter versus hitter stats are very small. Only three guys have seen him with at least, and with none more than six times. 
Yet, Lazardo has struck out those three, seven of their 17 at-bats. So let's do a little projected lineup and work and see how they fared versus lefties last year, as well as the whip and chase in this lineup. I just want to go look at their numbers versus overall lefties as well. I just think six and a half going into it is just a little too tough personally. So let's talk and see if we can get there. As there's only two people striking out over 25% last year versus lefty, and five of them were considered elite. When it comes to taking their walks, six of them were considered elite, with only two of them considered worse than league average, guys. The numbers are actually out there in this lineup that say the Angels can give this man a hard time. I, I At first, I wanted to get in on his outs over because I know this guy wants to freaking go deeper in the games. And then I looked at how many guys last year were walking above 11 to 19% versus lefties, guys. And if that's going to run a pitch count up, I don't know what else is going to run a pitch count up. So uh, can he get it? Yes. Their swing metrics are god awful this year of the Angels. But if we're going to go off what they did last year, it's telling me that this may be a little bit tougher than what it can be. So this to me is an easy stay off as there's no way in hell would I ever bet an under strikeout versus the Angels. Last year, I got burnt, looked like a clown, looked like a fool. This year, they got to prove to me I can at least bet unders on them. And I don't want to bet an under on a team right now where they already have called a team meeting. And that's exactly what's happened in Los Angeles. Not with the Dodgers, with the Angels, guys. So they've had a team meeting in the first three days of the season. Like, this team is going south. And I can't bet unders on a team that's looking to go on my money. So, uh, yeah. Let's get into the next picture on the board. If you're just popping up in here, do me a favor and smash that like button. And we're going to get into pictures. Next one on the board is Zach Gallen versus the Yankees. Number 20 in the black book. Striking people out last year at a 23.5% clip while walking people 6.5% of the time. Morning line was 5.5 at minus 125 on Caesars, where the best line available now is 6 plus minus 112 on FanDuel. Pitching outs over a under 16 and a half, a minus 125 at Caesars is juiced to the over, whereas earn runs under over two and a half are at a minus 123 juice to the over. Projected lineup for the Yankees are five lefties, four righties. We talked last week about Gallon and his velocity was down in the spring. And in the first game, his fastball was down one miles per hour, whereas curve and slider were down two miles per hour from where they were at last year. And it didn't come out last week, and we talked about it. He owned the Rockies in the past. And the drop in velocity didn't affect the outcome of that game as he went five innings, one and run, but he only struck out three batters on 90 pitches. Now his strikeouts were down, and that was affected by the drop in velo. Now this same thing happened with Gallon last year to start the season, and by the third game he was back. So I don't expect that after five straight seasons of having a 9.4K per nine for it not to be where it's been at his whole damn career or better. So. Can we go under on the man today? Well, if they bench Grissom, guys, I may have to actually bet my first under of the year. As Gallon has only seen three of these guys, at least six at bats or more, and the only one who strikes out to him out of Rizzo, Soto, and Grissom is Grissom with an ugly 33% strikeout rate versus Gallon, and that's in a healthy amount of at bats. Now, Gallon is at home, guys. We're not just last year. Throughout his whole career, he's just had a higher strikeout rate. But the Yankees are also projected five lefties, where, yeah, Gallon strikes out both sides of the plate equally. But the left-handed side does have a higher batting average, OPS, and almost 50 points higher when it comes to slugging. So maybe it's not the fate of strikeouts. Is it fade Gallon? As even in the games to start last year, when his Vila was down, the strikeouts were there, but he sure gave up his butt cheeks while striking people out. But either which way, guys, until he shows me he is back, I've got to look to capitalize. Now, I'm glad I stayed off fading him in the Rockies game, but it was in the numbers that he could have a great game. So I'm going to need to see these lineups of the Yankees and to see how I'm going to get in or if I'm just going to leave it be. If anything, I'm leaning heavy towards the earn runs over two and a half. I think he gets popped today, guys. Gallon ain't Gallon. Gallon had a great game versus a trash-ass Rockies team. And uh, yeah, that's what I think is going to happen. But at the end of the day, I have to put my money on what I think. And I'm also afraid of when does he show back up? When does that velocity just come back? It came back in the third game, last game. Does it 
Does it come back in the second game and kick me square in the nuts? Like, I don't want to get kicked in the nuts. No. No, Kenny, I don't want to get kicked in the nuts. All right, fellas. So, strictly for me at the time, Zach Gallon, I'm just no way am I betting his strikeout props over. No way am I looking to bet his K prop under, guys. If anything, I'm going to take his earn runs over two and a half, as I do think he gives up three or more runs today. Next guy on the board, which is a guy I got a bet on today, and we're not we're gonna talk number 22, Jose Barrios. Barrios at the Astros, striking people out 23.5% of the time while walking people 6.5% on the year last year. Morning line was 4.5 minus 165 on DraftKings. The best line available now is 5.5 at plus 130 on DraftKings. Pitching outs over, under over are at 16.5 minus 135 juice to the over at Caesars, whereas earned runs over under 2.5 are at a minus 127 juice to the over. Astros projected lineup is seven righties and two lefties. We talked about Barrios a lot last year, guys. Shit, two years ago on this show, his name was Bamia. But since Pedro Martinez sat down and had their one-on-one -on -one meeting with what he said he was noticing Barrios doing, he's been that dude the Blue Jays paid up for. Before Barrios went into his two-year hiatus, he was about league average when it came to ground ball percentages. And in his first game this season, he had a... 17 no he had a seven to three ground ball rate and if we're going to look at that on percentages guys that is about a 68 percent ground roll rate now is that going to freaking hold up in its freaking track no no it's not ah but let's talk a little bit more he did see these guys two times last year two times going six plus innings both games but yet not having more than three strikeouts in any of those games. I you go six, seven innings and only have three strikeouts max. Well, I'll tell you why. And that was the same motherfucking why we were on, who was it the other day? Strowman. Give me a ground ball pitcher in Houston, guys. You hear me talking about it all the time on the show. Maybe not this year, but you know I've heard you heard me talk about it last year. And that is Houston. Houston soaks their infield more than anybody else. And 108 miles per hour off the bat on the ground, instead of it getting through the infield like every other, it's slowed down to where they make that nice play. They get the double play when needed. So you got to take advantage of certain teams and of what you know they do and take advantage of it, guys. So you give me a guy who's a ground ball pitcher, bro, and I will take him. And when Jose Barrios is on, this dude is a ground ball machine. 58%. Um, is what I believe he had, not 68. 58% ground ball rate in his first start. Went out there, dig down the Tampa Bay Rays. And I don't expect nothing less out of this man today. When we go look at this pitcher versus batter stats, there's 144 at-bats in those plate appearances. Barrios is only striking out 21% of them at that time, which goes to tell you the Astros make contact when they chase, which – with Jose Barrios, that is my key with him. It is chase contact. I don't look for whiff. I don't look for that. No, it's chase contact. You go under, over, all based off of chase contact. And this, this team is really good at putting the ball into play. Now, does that mean I don't want to bet Jose Barrios? Hell, motherfucking no. But the one game he did go seven innings, because he went six plus innings each game versus them last year. But the one time he went seven was in Houston where the ground balls tend to be a little bit slower. And like I said it on a, a thousand times, you soak this freaking infield and give me a ground ball pitcher. I am going to take their outs over a hundred out of a hundred times, guys. It is what it is. And when Jose Berrios is on, this guy is a ground ball machine. So I am on the Jose Berrios over 16 and a half outs at a minus 120. Got in that team Sharpie this morning at a at a bet MGM. Yes, sir. <clears throat> wow. Thank you, Jesus. And I ain't talking about Jesus, Jesus, because, you know, I know. Thank him. Yes. But no, I'm thanking the guy in the background who's taking freaking bong loads without me because I wish I was over at his house right now because I got to smoke these freaking cartridges because I. I can't smoke no weed like that in my house. So uh, without further ado, guys, you already know the damn drill. We're getting to the part of the show where we're going to talk us some hitting props. And not with just any, man. Nah, nah. The last Megalodon living is here to bless us with some of that plus monies. So enough small talk, guys. And let's get to Megalodon, it. The size of really two school buses. Are they extinct? 
Mm. Are they extinct? That's the big question. What's the new evidence now? A satellite photo near Sao Paulo. When you compare them next to the first photo, I'd say that's a 70-foot shark. <laughs> that's a 70-foot shark right there, my boy. What up, Sharp and Sharp in the house? Let's get this motherfucker, Sharpie. It's a new day. Let's get this Tuesday. Let's make it our bitch. What do you think? Man, I, I need to make it my bitch, bro. I uh, had a losing day, one and two yesterday. Um, bounce back days are real, at least uh, with one of the guys I'm talking about later on today. And they're real with fucking me, too. So uh, these guys got the show on the right day, guys, because we're winning the day. Go time. Let's go, my guy. Smash that thumbs up button for our guy Sharpie if you haven't. Well, enough so about you me. Like, you like what enough you're hearing? Me. Give my guy the support. Hit the thumbs up. He's out here doing it on his own. The fucking dead, baby. Let's go. We'll talk a little ribbies Not here today. Own, I got big, people like you. Tuesday. got people like Spin. Yeah, it's Big Ribeye Tuesday, bro. So without further ado, I'm going to shut up and let you run with it. Let's run with it indeed, you guys. I got a nice little four-pack today. Uh, you know, I was looking back at the notes from last year. I saw that we really didn't get into the game for RBIs until May. So, uh, you know, I was a little discouraged. We came off the hop there, one and three. Uh, what was that, the second day of the season? So, look, we're going to move forward. We're going to build this thing. We're going to stack, and we're going to crush it by season's end. We're still waiting for data to mature, and what we've got to do is we've kind of got to look at at least the way that I took a step back for this thing. Side-by-side -side analysis, kind of who are they, who were they last year, uh, I'm not so big in the preseason. I mean, everyone, you know, they're hitting meatballs in the preseason. Uh, that is what it is. But what I want to do is I want to start to look at these guys. Yeah, well, you know the deal last year. We looked at where they're hitting in the rotation. We looked at how many times they've seen the previous pitcher. Do they have the confidence out there? We're going to kind of blend in a couple of other hybrid stats here. How have they started this season uh, versus their season averages last year? And we're going to see if we can't get to the window. Game number one, though, Sharpie, we are going to get to the window with here. I'm opening her up. We're going to go look at this L.A. Angels, Miami Marlins opportunity today. Slight dogs here with the L.A. Angels and, of course, the Marlins at home 0-5. Who would have thought 0-5 for this Marlins with the staff that they have, the bats that they have, that they would open up like this. But we have the third highest hitting conditions in the game with the wind blowing out almost dead center at 14 miles an hour. I feel conditions to go get the knife and the steak sauce for a little ribby action here today. And uh, I'm jumping in. I'm going not on that Miami Marlins side that can't seem to find their way out of a boat right now. I'm going to the other side, though. I'm going to the Angels. Now, normally when the season starts, I am not a fan of player-only meetings. Not a fan of those three games into the season. But they had to do something. They were getting slapped around out there, Baltimore. They came out. They figured it out that last game. And they moved their way on down. Huge comeback yesterday. Did not show any quit. Give me Taylor Ward. I got Taylor Ward here to get this thing rolling for us here. Last year, season kind of compromised. Why? He took a pitch, took a bat right to the face, or a pitch right to the face. Took facial fracture out there and uh, toasted most of his season last year. But best guy on the team hitting left-handers. I know Jesus Lazardo certainly uh, – you know, I've heard you call him Black Jesus before and support and recognize all of that. Last game out there, eight strikeouts, only allowed two runs over a five-inning stretch against them Pirates, but a plus 175. The guy's already got five ribbies on the season, a uh, plus 175 spot for our guy here. Four of the last five games, he's knocked one in at least, if not more. I'm going Taylor Ward to open up the RBI action today, Sharpie. Four in the lineup there. Let's get that cash with the Angels. I freeze on to number two. Let's roll on. I'll just keep it running, Sharpie. If it's good with you, it's good with me, my guy. On down the yeah, line. You You're going in and out, but you just keep talking because it's lagging a little bit with you, but they're able to at yeah. least listen. So that's all good. All righty. Well, let's uh let's roll on. This next game we've got on the lineup. We'll go to St. Louis Cardinals spot here today. We've got the St. Louis Cardinals. The San Diego Fathers out there trying to roll things up and smoke them and uh, sitting there as small favorites at minus 135. Now, the Padres did me dirty yesterday. No doubt about that. Uh, look, I like them first five. I thought St. Louis Cardinals as slight favorites to open up a first game of a series. You're going to want to fade them boys all season long. But last night they got the job done. Turns out they ended up as dogs in that spot anyhow. But 
my lean here is to put some pressure on you, Darvish. Two years ago, I gave him the nickname Huge Garbage. I'm not sure if it was me or I heard it from somebody else, but he paid out of his ass last year. He got the job done top to bottom, up and down, left to right. Uh, five innings, one run baseball, struck out seven guys the other day against the San Francisco Giants. But as I looked at these numbers, I thought to myself, there's two guys on the St. Louis team that we capitalized with last year. We had Nolan Arenado and we had Paul Goldschmidt. As I peeled the onion back to me, this was just a simple opportunity to take advantage of the guy that's got more at-bats, 31 at-bats, nine hits, a home run, three RBIs. That's good for 290 against you, Darvish. And uh, we've got RBIs out of Paul Goldschmidt in five of his last six games as well. They're hanging a plus 220 on this thing here. Darvish is a 455 ERA. It was him or Arenado. I chose Paul Goldschmidt uh, to get the job done at plus 220 for us. And we roll on. Onward and upward. Let's take a look at this game here. Uh, these boys have been just suspect as F to start the season off. I'm looking at the Toronto Blue Jays and the Houston Astros. Now, Astros. They turned them up last night there. They touched them up top to bottom. It was no different than a, uh, well, we won't even go to the sleepover situation. And I don't like the, the situation with the wind here, 16 miles an hour in. But where I want to go is I want to target a guy that you talked about on uh, last time I was on the show. I got two ears and one mouth. I actually do listen, especially the guys that I respect that know some shit about this shit. And uh, Alec Bregman, for me, the guy to go out there and capitalize on 20 at-bats. He's behind our guy, Kyle Tucker, Alvarez, and Altuve. What I like about this Astros lineup is they didn't hit the panic button. They've kept it pretty consistent from the start of the season and kind of how they projected the season to go. Just going to take him time to fall back into form. When you look at Bregman, started off last year or finished last year with a 2.62, uh, you know, batting average. He's only 158 this year. His on-base percentage last year, 363. He's only 238 this year. He's got one ribby this year. He had 98 last year, just short of that triple digit mark for us. He's still hanging a number of plus 160. So I jumped in. Alec Bregman for me, plus 160. You know, the thing about Barrios, I just heard you talking about this guy and being a ground ball hitter. I do like that. I do like that opportunity for us to capitalize and get some guys on base for Goldie to knock him in. I'm sorry, for Bregman to knock him in. Uh, but the thing about our guy in... He's giving up three runs, bro. He's giving up three runs. Our thing about Jose Barrios, write it down, circle it, underline it, grab the fucking highlighter out while you're at it. When this guy's a dog, he's 13-0 and 0 to the over. Check it out. Make a note of it. Cashed last week against Tampa Bay. Maybe it's because of that ground ball factor and lack of defense for this Toronto Blue Jays team early in the season, Sharpie. Not sure about it, but I do want to get me an opportunity with Bregman. I think this guy, you, you can't get to 100 by sitting there through the first six game of the season with just one. That's not going to get the job done. So give us Bregman, especially with Barrios in that dog role. And then last but not least, I'm going to continue to pick on this AL East. Maybe it's because I know it the best, or I think I know it the best, uh, being the situation that we're in here as a Toronto Blue Jays fan myself. But I'm looking to close this night out for me at 9.40 p.m. I got the 5-0 and Red hot New York Yankees right now going up against this three and two Arizona Diamondbacks. And I'm going to tell you where I'm going to get involved with here. Zach Gallen, 17 and nine on his home turf. Nope. We're going to go to the other side and pick on nasty Nestor Cortez. And uh, again, where do we want to get involved with this one here? Well, we want to go to a guy who's better average, albeit has not seen Nestor Cortez, does go out there and mash lefties. That's our guy, Kettle Marte. We saw Nestor look very vulnerable that last game out there, the way he started things off. A flurry of runs before the Yankees were able to come back there on top. And I just think the pricing for this guy at that 145 is the sweet spot. Haven't seen many sweet spot opportunities this year, but I saw 145 for this guy with this loaded lineup that they have out there. And a Yankees team at 5-0 and that I don't believe is 5-0. I, I see it. I got two eyes. I just, I'm not picking up what they're putting down here. I think the Yankees more than likely take this loss today. I do think this is going to be a score, a game that we see some runs and things get leaky, specifically around the fourth inning or so. And that's what I don't expect Keto Marte to be in the leadoff position. I expect him to be probably around that three spot just because of the order and the rotation of the game itself. So that does it for us, baby. Four of them. Sharpie sharp. Four RBIs today to try to get us to the window, my guy. What do you think? 
I dropped I dropped them all in the chat. Um, I've got terrible service right now because I'm in the middle of a tornado warning. <laughs> so I just threw them out there to get them in. So uh, let them know where they can find you, my boy. I'm not going to try to talk when you talk because it tends to fuck up more. So thank you so much for showing up, my boy. Always, my guy. Good to see you and uh, oh, yeah, the crew always. out there, Tell your chat. You. 17 memorabilia, the odds bunch, EQ, Johnny Guns. Look at these guys up in here, man. I haven't seen so most of you guys since last baseball season. I see Al Cervic in the house. I'll be back and around you, Sharpie. Let's go, man. We got a big baseball season going. You can follow me on X at Pimp Slap POD. Anytime I roll live, uh, turn your notifications on and pop on in. We're trying to make that cash. We do Saturday <laughs> streams as well. Having fun making money and trying to get them bookies bent over the knee, Sharpie. So, uh, Appreciate you, my guy. Great seeing you as always. And uh, let's roll back next week talking about this. Hold I hold him, bro. That's the, that's the deal. Megalodon, the size of really two school buses. Are they extinct? Mm. Are they extinct? That's the big question. What's the new evidence now? A satellite photo near Sao Paulo. When you compare them next to the first photo, I'd say that's a 70 foot shark. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, once again, fellas, the only bet we have in so far pitching side is Jose Barrios's outs over 16 and a half. Let's go talk about the other side of that matchup. And that's Framer Valdez, number 17 in the black book versus the Blue Jays, striking people out last year 25% of the time while walking people 7% on the year. Morning line was five and a half at even money on DraftKings where the best line available is at plus 110 to that five and a half, and that's over on FanDuel. His pitching outs are at 17 and a half, minus 128 at Caesars, juice to the under, whereas earned runs are at one and a half, minus 164, juice to the over at Caesars Sportsbook. Next on the list is what is wrong with Framer Valdez, as he got smacked around in two of his first three spring training starts, as well as in his debut not going five innings, giving up three earned runs while walking six and striking out five. So the first thing you have to go check is his velocity. And Yaz's fastball and cutter were both down one mile per hour, as his curveball and changeup was where they needed to be. But when I went and looked at the horizontal and vertical movement, his changeup and his curve are 4% worse when it comes to horizontal movement than last season. Granted, it's just one game, but in those are some big drops, guys. And if the ball ain't spinning like it was last year, they're able to lay off more pitches. And it wasn't a six walks he gave up last week that they were able to lay off those pitches. Now, the Blue Jays over the years versus lefties have seen have sent more pitchers under their strikeout prop when facing a lefty. So let's go check out these batter versus hitter splits in this projected lineup. As we have six people with at least five at-bats totaling 50 batters. That's an all and a total of five combined strikeouts. That's 10% of two thirds of this lineup. Um, I get it. There's three guys in this lineup who haven't seen him, but they are three of the last four guys in this projected lineup. So I'm thinking five and a half strikeouts is too many, especially for a guy whose velocity is down with his breaking pitches, not breaking the way he is used to on top of the six guys in this projected lineup with a career 10% strikeout rate. So line up pendings, guys, and uh, definitely umpire pending. You're going to see Sharpie tweet out his first under strikeout prop of the year. The only way I can go until he gets back to normal, guys. And over the past years, the Jays ain't been those slouch team versus a lefty when it comes to striking out. So have them Twitter notifications on, guys, as we are waiting on lineups for a few. Now, one thing before we go to the next guy is his cutter break was way up from last season as he only used it 3.5% of his pitches last week compared to 13% last year. Now, if he's smarter or the Astros analytical team is, they're going to tell him to go use that pitch a lot more today. And that pitch, guys, is a ground ball pitch, guys. So even if I'm on that strikeout prop under and he's thrown more cutters, that's fine. Big Fram Diesel is a guy who needs ground balls to be Fram Diesel. Last week, he had more fly balls than ground balls. That's not the type of pitcher he is. They're going to go and look at the analytics and say, hey, whoa, this pitch is actually better than where it was last year. This is why you were getting this, okay? This is part of baseball. Now, his velo and spin rate are trash. 
which is fine, but not on his cutter. So I do expect to see more cutters today, which will induce more ground balls, which is less strikeouts. So all in all, I just got to make sure the lineup is what it is and that we don't have no C.V. Buckner behind the plate type thing where he going to call every different pitch, ball, strike, ball. Learn that one the hard way when I started betting unders that you definitely have to pay attention to a motherfucking umpire when it comes to an under. Shout out to the chat, guys. 50 plus live. If you haven't, smashed that like button. If you're new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that subscribe as well. Next guy on, well, I'm showing Castillo for some reason. I'm sorry about that, guys. I was talking about not Castillo. I was talking about Big Fran Diesel. I just didn't change the picture because I was a cuck. So Sharpie gets the cuck award for talking about Framber right there with another pitcher's picture up because, uh, yeah, my bad. Sometimes I get a little too high. Next person we're going to talk about on the board is Shane Bieber, guys. The man, the myth, the legend, the guy we made a whole lot of money with last week, especially if you laddered him. Number 25 in the black book, Shane Bieber at the Mariners, striking people out at a 26% clip while walking people 9.5% of the time. Morning line is 6.5 at minus 102 on Fandle, where the best line is still on Fandle at 6.5, but now minus 115. His pitching outs opened up at 18 and a half plus money to the over. It's now at 17 and a half minus 230 to the over. Who the fuck can bet that? Earn runs under over two and a half at minus 135 juice to the under at MGM. Projected lineup for the Mariners is five lefties and four righties. Shane Bieber, guys, gets his shot at the Mariners after we were on him in his first start where he went out and did the damn thing like he said he was going to do. And uh, he went six innings and had 11 punch outs as his fastball was the talk of the Internet. But we already knew it was back, guys, as we do our homework in these parts. They just got to do their work, guys, as I can't play for them. And even if I did, I'd be way fucking worse because I'm no good at playing the game of baseball. And yeah. It looks like Bieber has turned back the clock, guys, and is it's either over or nothing at the moment. And last week, guys, we had a perfect storm. No one was talking Bieber's fastball, as well as we had eight guys in the A's lineup who had a potential two strikeouts each with their whiff and chase percentages, preferably the whiff. 3% worse than where it was than league average. Now, when we look at the Mariners projected lineup, there are only four guys last year who whiff 2% or worse than league average. And one of them's career whiff is 1% better than league average so far this season, as he has regressed to the norm of the way he was. And he's at 20% where last year he had an outlier year where he whiffed 1.8% higher. So technically at the moment, three people in this team whiff. That's the key I look for to play on this man, and I can't go under, though. There's no way in hell I'm going under on Shane Bieber right now, and strictly for, as we talked about it last week, if he turned back the hands of time, and it wasn't just the A's lineup, he had a Strider SK per nine, a 30% versus the left-handed side, and like 37% strikeout rate versus the right-handed side. There's no way in hell I'm going to ever try to go under on a guy who puts people away for a living. Now, if he goes back to what he's been doing the last two years, where we ride him when we get a team who whiffs, like the A's, then he's going to go out there, have a solid freaking game because he's Shane fucking Bieber, and he's one of the best ground ball pitchers when needed. The guy does not look for strikeouts all the time. He is content with a weak pop fly, weak contact, and knows how to get a double play when there's a runner on first. He will look for the punch out with a runner on second or third, but he is a true ace in the game of baseball who looks to go deep every freaking game. And I expect this guy to go deep today as well. But let's talk about the other ace before we talk about our two bets in this game. And that's number nine, Luis Castillo, guys. La Parada, guys. It's La Parada day on this show. And if you know, you know. Luis Castillo gets the Guardian, striking people out at a 27.5% clip while walking people 7% of the time last year. Morning line was 5.5 at minus 108 on Fandle, where Fandle still has the best line, and that's at my 
minus 102. Pitching outs under over 18 and a half, minus 156 to the under, whereas earned runs are at two and a half, minus 165 juice to the under as well. Excuse me. Projected lineup is eight lefties and one righties. Luis Castillo, guys, is coming off of his first game of the season versus the Red Sox, where he went five innings, gave up four earned runs, and struck out five on 91 pitches. And I'm going to tell you that stat line just gave me a fucking hard on, fellas. And no, not the 91. No, not the 91 pitches, though. But that that's nice, because at least we know he's ready for a full workload. It was the fact that he got his butt smacked, guys. The fact that he gave up four earned runs. This man only gave up four earned runs seven times last year. And in six of those seven games after, he shut down the team the next time. Castillo bounce back days are real, fellas. In those seven games after giving up his butt cheeks like he did last week, he's averaging 5.2 innings of work while only giving up 1.5 earned runs a game while striking out six and a half batters a game. And that earn run average of one and a half, that's including a game that he got smoked for four runs in less than three innings. So that's like, in the games he's done well, he's putting up goose eggs, guys. And guess what? There's nothing wrong with his velocity. There's nothing wrong with his horizontal break. There's not, there's, Castillo looks every which fine when you look at the analytical side. And we stayed off of him last week for a reason. That Red Sox lineup is pretty damn deep the way they've stacked it this year. And I thought it was going to be a tough day for Castillo. Well, I don't think it's going to be a tough day on bounce back day, guys. You do not kick a sleeping dog, bro. And this dude does not like to have back-to-back shitty games. He is a true ace. And we get him in bounce back mode. So, this is where I see a pitcher's duel, guys. Any which of these pitchers is going seven innings today. Can it be both? Yes. But I only need one to go out there and hold out his damn thing for this to cash. And that's where our Team Sharpie got in under the first seven. Under five and a half at minus 120. You may ask me, why didn't you go full game? Because I bet starting pitchers. I bet. Not bullpens. I don't want to put my trust into a bullpen. I think both of these guys have the opportunity to go six to seven innings each. I need one guy to be on for my under five and a half to cash. And if both are on, it's freaking smooth sailing. Now, those for looking at a strikeout prop. We only have four batters in this lineup that's seen Castillo before, totaling 54 at bats. And Castillo has a 25% strikeout rate versus them. Not too shabby, guys, for being Guardian players. As well as five people not seen him before, guys, which is advantage Castillo. And he's at home. We're in his first full season with the Mariners. He had a strikeout percentage 8% higher than when he was on the road. Um, Yeah. How about this? He struck out lefties and righties equally at a nice 27% clip. So pretty much lineup proof when you're looking at strikeouts. I think I'm talking me up into a double spot guys like i said you do not kick a dog when he's down and castillo is a fucking dog and this dog bites back so i am on that over five and a half strikeouts for castillo at minus 106 as well with being on the under first seven um the under five and a half first seven at a minus 120 guys so is what it is Ain't what it ain't. I will put them in the chat so everyone can know what I am on because I know that my feed was kind of shitty today. So appreciate you guys all for tuning in. And there's my boy Noli. No, Noli knows something. But uh, yeah, bro, bigger ace. People give up them butt cheeks. They, they do the ditty, dog. You know, that they do the ditty. So uh, let me run through the chat, see if anybody dropped in some best bets. Smash that like button if you haven't. If you're new to this channel, do me a favor and hit that subscribe as well. Nice to see Mr. Heat up in here. Know you work a lot, my boy. So appreciate you for tuning in live today. JT, my boy. Let's go. Where's some best bets? Of course, Guillermo Zertucci. I'll... Oh, I preach, baby boy. I like the peach. Um, No one wants to throw their best bets out. So I do appreciate everybody tuning in and uh, actually giving a flying shit about what I have to think about the game of baseball. So, yeah. If I missed your best bet, I'm sorry. It's because I skipped over it because like 99% of the people were just saying hello to me. And I appreciate everybody that did. And, uh, you know, say something in the chat, guys. Don't be afraid. I promise I won't fuck your mom. I promise. I mean, unless she's in Tennessee. Then I then I pull back my pinky promise. How about that, you? 
break my pinky. So uh, Noli No says he grabbed that uh, first five under in Cleveland, Seattle. I hear you, brother. I'm on that first seven under, and uh, we'll talk about it. But you, you already get my game plan by going seven. And that's the same, obviously close to the same as five. You know, you get less times to the lineup. So I get your point, too. Appreciate you all, though, guys. Until tomorrow, I'm Sharpie's Bets. And uh, this show is sponsored by not a motherfucking damn thing, guys. So uh, we will be every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday at 3 Eastern, 12 p.m. Pacific. And I will drop all my bets on those days. I will tweet out the ones that I give to the people that pay me. I'm not going to be holding my bets. Nah, nah. But if you want to freaking join Team Sharpie on the days that we don't have the show or the time that I don't have to put out losing best bets like yesterday, um, hit me up on Twitter, guys. Uh, I'm always open to chat with you. I'll let you know what I charge. But uh, who gives a fuck? Because this show's free. All I ask for is the like button to be smashed. So until tomorrow, stay solid. Keep your bankroll freaking... And uh, fuck the bookies. You know the deal, fellas. You already know. There's only two things you need in life. Hookers and blow. And I'm fresh out of hookers. Let's get to the money. Let's get to the money. 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 Let's get to the money. Let's get to the motherfucking money. Fuck the bookies. Fuck the bookies. FTB screaming fuck the bookies. Fuck the bookies. Fuck, fuck the bookies. Fuck the bookies. Fuck, fuck the bookies. Fuck, fuck the bookies. Fuck, fuck the bookies. Fuck the bookies. FTB screaming fuck the bookies. Fuck the bookies. Fuck, fuck the bookies. We don't sing it in your ass. Give me fuck yeah. the bookies. Woke up in the morning, grab my little black hood. Guess they can eat a dick, cause we lost by the hood. Can't win them all, so you never see me. Shook. Today's a new day, the bookmaker's getting cooked When I spot a dirty keg of four units getting played Always find the value, I will never be afraid Scared money don't win, but I'm not going all in Unless I see a bet I love, then I put my balls on a bookie's chin Let it all soak in, doubling my bread, winning money with my friends If you got the itch and you wanna go big Follow Sharpie bets and you gon' really fucking win This is not financial advice, it's entertainment But if I find the right price, believe I'm parlaying it You can see my spreadsheet